Your Massachusetts real estate market update for December 27th, 2022. So what are we going to talk about? As always, we're going to go over the single family and condo market. But for the last two weeks of December, and it's been a pretty quiet couple weeks because of the holidays, but we're also going to talk about interest rates. They've pretty much stayed flat, but we're going to take a look at actually a year over year as well as a month over month differences and just talk about really what that means. We're going to do a quick check in with the distressed properties in Massachusetts. And well, there was really nothing new in the luxury segment so i figured we'd actually turn to two articles and talk about the ramifications in 2023 hi i'm jeff chubb i'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent that sold more than a thousand homes and is one of the state's top real estate agents if you like hearing about the massachusetts real estate market then be sure to hit that like and subscribe button but let's dig into the data and start with the single family market where we currently have 3612 units on the market. Now, inventory continues to drop, but it's a seasonal trend, and you can actually see it in this year-over-year -year inventory graph. In the last seven weeks, we've actually seen inventory drop by 1,799 units, or 33%. And year-over-year, -year, we have 1,364 more houses on the market. Now, last week, we had 373 new listings. This week, we have 134 new listings that came on the market. And it's not a surprise. Very few people, they want to put their house on the market between Christmas and New Year's. We have 500 62 houses go under agreement last week, or 382 go under agreement this week. Now, I thought that was a pretty impressive number. We're still 21% off below our activity for the same week last year, but that 20% really kind of seems to be that delta, so it really all makes sense. We had 922 homes sell two weeks ago with 468 selling this week, with an average sales price of $638,000 and a median sales price of $533,000. And that months of inventory, months of inventory, that's how we gauge what type of market it is. Is it a seller's market? Is it a buyer's market? Zero to five months worth of inventory is what we consider a seller's market. This week, we had our months of inventory at 1.11 months. So ultimately, that means it's a great market to be a seller in right now. Now, I met a new buyer last week. We looked at a house. He actually wanted to see three more for tomorrow, but two out of those three actually already went under agreement with one of those properties only spending two days on the market and the other one being on the market for 37 days. So we're really seeing inventory move for there are fewer buyers out there, but less listings out there it means profit properties are selling. Basically, if they're priced right and they're in good condition, then they're going to sell on this market. In the condo market, we had 1,869 units on the market. Now, inventory decreased by 894 units um, over the last six weeks, which is about by 32%. But as you can see from this year-over-year -year inventory chart, that change is also seasonal. Now, buyers have 275 more units to choose from compared to the same week last week, with 53 newly listed condos last week and 184 coming on the market the week leading up to Christmas. Again, expect this number to be down. It's the time of year. Year. Now, 145 condos went under agreement last week, with 247 going under agreement the week prior. And compared to this week last year, that under agreement is actually 35% less than the same week last year. Now, we had 167 condos closed last week, with 311 closing the week prior. The average sales price was $604,000. Meanwhile, the median sales price was $474,450. Now, that months of inventory, again, uh, it went down to 1.56 months, and this is compared to the 1.67 months that we saw just last week. Do you like hearing about what's going on in the Massachusetts real estate market? Then make sure you smash that like button and I truly appreciate you consider subscribing. Now let's talk about mortgages. Generally, not a whole lot goes on towards the end of December in the real estate market or the mortgage market. And this year, it was no different. But let's take a look at the month over month and year over year mortgage rate numbers. Now, looking at the 30 year fixed interest rates, they've actually gone down by a third of a point for a conventional 30 year uh, fixed loan and 0.43% for a 30 year FHA loan. So let's use the rate of 5.85%. And the numbers of buying a $700,000 house, putting 5% down. We're going to use that FHA rate since we're putting 5% down. Now, one month ago, your monthly principal and interest payment would have been $4,107. Today, that payment would be $3,923. This means that a home buyer has saved 4.5% of their monthly carrying costs, or really another way to look at it is that their buying power actually increased by 4.5%. And this is great news, which should pay dividends going into 2023. So let's look at it though one year ago, because that interest 
interest rate was 2.85%, which means that same mortgage payment would have been $2,750. Ouch. This is all something we're going to talk about in more detail and the ramifications of all this, what it means going into 2023 in a couple of moments. But first, let's take a look at foreclosures and accounting for all single family condos and multifamily properties throughout Massachusetts. We currently have 120 foreclosures on the market and 27 short sale properties for sale in the state of Massachusetts. Now that makes a total distressed property inventory of 147 units in the entire state. Available distressed inventory increased by 11 units since we last spoke, and the percentage of distressed properties for available inventory actually continued to increase and is now 2.35% of all Massachusetts inventory. And this is thanks to the large inventory decreases that we're seeing, which are seasonal. And this is important because banks, they don't care about what type of year it is, what time of year it is when they list a property. Whenever that property is ready to go, that's when they're going to put it on the market. So this increase in the percentage of total properties for sale compared to foreclosures, compared to the total properties for sale, is not something at this point that I'm really worried about as we turn the corner and go into 2023. Check out this article. Home delistings hit record as mortgage rates, home prices remain elevated. Now, as we've talked about and shown, a lot of this delisting, it's seasonal. But according to Redfin, since November 20th, they've actually seen 2% of homes nationwide taken off the market. And this is compared to 1.6% during the same time last year. So essentially, we're looking at an increase of 0.4% more sellers taking their houses off the market. Why? Well, they state that the reason is that sellers, they're just not getting offers at their asking price, or maybe they're not even receiving them at all. Therefore, these sellers, well, they're taking their houses off the market. Now, I do believe this is going to be the story for 2023. The sellers that don't need to sell, they simply just will not come to the market. And this will keep inventory tight in many markets throughout the United States. And most importantly, I believe this to be the case in our market here in Massachusetts. Which brings me to the next article. Housing turnover will drop to the lowest rate since the 80s, economist projects. It's projected that 32 out of 1,000 households will uh, put their house on the market in 2023. This would mean that home sale activity in the United States may reach the lowest point since the early 1980s. Okay, let's talk about why this guy is, well, partially wrong. As I've shown multiple times, our sales levers are currently in the 2012 to 2014 range. I've said multiple times, but figure, let's say it again. Those were some great years in the real estate world. In the article, he states that we do expect some moderation in rates to go into next year, but even after accounting for that and the elevated prices overall, affordability is likely to remain a pretty strong constraint. Now, my economist friend is not accounting for inflation. So let's say mortgage rates ease a little and home prices, well, they stay level with no appreciation next year. Well, when you factor in the high inflation levels, so let's just say on average 6% next year, that actually means that housing just became 6% more affordable through that devaluation valuation of the dollar. Again, that is if housing prices stay level. If they dip a bit, which I believe they will in many markets throughout the United States, and there could be a couple areas in Massachusetts where we're going to see it, then that means housing is only going to get more affordable. Okay, he then goes on to say that many sellers have no plans on returning to the market anytime soon. Ding, 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 there it is. And that, my friends, will be the story of 2023. Sellers, they're going to remain on the sidelines and they're going to continue to control the inventory levels and thereby ensure prices do not take a dip like we saw in 2008. Why are sellers not coming to the market? It's because of people like me. I have a three bedroom house in what I consider the perfect location. I have a 2.85% interest rate on that house. And even with the third kid coming in 2023, my wife and I, we're going to make our three bedroom house work. My two older girls, well, they're just going to share a room until we're ready to do an addition. But the reason is, is that 2.85% on call to $600,000 loan is equal to $2,481 a month in that principal and interest payment. Now, borrowing that same $600,000 today would cost me an extra $1,116 a month for a payment of $35.97. For that difference, I could essentially go out and get a second mortgage for two hundred dollars to put that addition on the house that I love. It makes no sense in the current rate environment for folks like myself to move. Now, people like us, we're just going to continue to restrain the inventory levels. But as rates come down, or while well, life circumstances change, think fourth kid in my situation, or maybe a relocation for someone else, then that is where you're gonna see some thawing in that seller side of the market. That is unless there's a major economic event that makes people need to put their house on the market because they can't afford it anymore. And for everyone's sake, 
Let's hope that doesn't happen. Want to talk about your own personal real estate goals? All of my information is in the description below. Look, I always love to talk real estate. And whether you're looking to buy or sell a home in the next nine or 90 days, then I would love to chat with you and find out a little bit more about your real estate goals. Questions or comments about the market data? Then drop me a line in the comment section below. You take the time to watch this video. I'm always going to take the time to answer your comments and questions. And as I always say, an informed person, well, they're a powerful person. So until next time, which will actually be next year, have a happy new year.